by the early 60s, we had captured um, a device. It was actually during the Vietnam era, and we captured a Russian device called the LIDA machine, L-I-D-A, which was actually looked at by a guy named Ross Addy, one of the leading researchers, again, for military. He, re he looked at this, and it was used for putting um, uh, military prisoners of war into trance-like states using flickering lights and sound and electromagnetic field oscillations so that you would get in a very relaxed state, in a state where they could extract intelligence much more efficiently from you. And that became a whole new review for military te technologists in this country, thinking maybe we can use electromagnetic fields to manipulate what's going on in the brain. In 1969, there was a book published called Towards a Psycho-Civilized Society. And this was put together by Jose Delgado. And he had his doc uh, doctorate in uh, elect uh, electrophysiology from the University of Madrid from 1950. He came over the, to Yale University in the mid-60s and began mapping the human brain, stimulating the human brain and primates and, and bulls and animals, all different kinds of animals, stimulating different parts of the brain to see what parts were responsible for what kinds of um, actions or cognitive functions and so on. So what he was doing in those days, in the 60s, was he was implanting microcircuits and then, or not microcircuits, circuits and stimulating them with RF, radio frequency energy. So one of the illustrations or photographs shows a charging bull coming at him and he throws the switch and the bull stops right in front of him. Well, by the mid-80s, he figured out you didn't need any implanted technologies. All you needed to know was how to modulate the right frequency. And the energy density, the concentration of energy, was one fiftieth of what the Earth naturally produces. Very small, small energy in the RF range, radio frequency ranges. Now, compare that to what's around us right at the moment. At the moment, there's 200 million times more radio frequency and energy around us in any urban area than there than there is uh, naturally produced by the Earth. So a huge amount, and out of all that background noise, what he found is by hitting a precise window frequency with very low energy concentrations, you would pick that signal out because it was coherent, not like nature all over the map. It was a coherent rhythmic signal in a very precise frequency. The brain would pick it out, and he could change behavior from lethargic to highly active, back and forth, back and forth, like switching on and off a light switch. Let me ask a question right here. Is that with a subject that was in, say, a short distance of whatever he was utilizing to affect this particular pulse, or is this at large? Could he do this on, say, larger groups? Uh, you could do it on a lot. You could do it on an individual basis or a very large basis. In fact, if you go back to the work of J.F. Gordon MacDonald, he was a geophysicist at UCLA, and he was a science advisor to Lyndon Johnson. He wrote a chapter in a book called Unless Peace Comes, and, and the chapter was called How to Wreck Your Environment. But within that chapter was a section that said, if we could ever learn how to electronically stroke the, the ionosphere, this layer that begins about 30 miles above the Earth's surface that's electrically charged, if we could ever figure out how to electronically stroke it, he said, to get it to send a signal back to the Earth, we could affect uh, the behavior of people over huge geographic areas on a hemispheric basis. And it wouldn't affect everyone. It would affect 70 or 80 percent of the population is what they more or less figured. But this was a technology that didn't exist in 1969. In the early 70s, Zbigniew Brzezinski referenced J.F. Gordon's work and said, you know, this is a technology that will likely emerge. What has happened with a project that, that I wrote a book on some time ago, Angels Don't Play This Harp, about the harp project, it was designed to do many things. As a side effect or a deliberate effect, this can happen. You know, I mean, the fact is they generate the right kind of signal in the right range to override brain function. And that you can kind of look at the brain in sort of this way in terms of predominant brain activity. One to four hertz or pulses or vibrations per second. This is where you are in your deepest, deepest states of sleep. The next range, approximately four to seven hertz. This is um, the, the theta range, the theta range. This is where you are between awake and asleep when you're consciously aware of your dreams. Uh, this is where little kids are between three and six years old why they have trouble distinguishing reality from imagination because of the way the brain works at that time. A little bit further up you have the alpha range, 7 to say 11, 12 hertz in that range. This is where you are when you're in the zone, when you're doing your art, your reading, your research, when you're really focused, you know, that's where you want to be. And then above that is, is the beta ranges where people should be when we're actively having this kind of a dialogue. And then high beta is where you are in your agitated states. If you think about affecting the brain 
um, by analogy, similarly to dialing a radio station. You know, when you dial through the radio radio station, most of the most of the energy is just static. Mm -hmm. It's your static between the stations. When you get on station, you get resonance, harmony between the transmitter and receiver, and you get a nice clear signal. The same is true in the human body and the human brain. Whether you look at it at an elemental level, the elements that compose the body, or you take it all the way up to the organs of the body, you can create modulations, oscillations that will override the brain's natural rhythms. The brain will entrain or lock onto that external signal and begin to mirror it. By putting this coherent signal in. Right. Coherent, meaning rhythmic, right. not random. Right. And so it's not so much the amount of energy, it's the way the energy is manipulated. And so what they